Well, hello, my lovelies. Robbie here again from Kickbike Garage. And we're actually in the garage this time for a change. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Anyway, in this video, we are going to, or I am at least, <laughs> going to attempt to uh, fit the cut performance uh, anti-dive uh, front disc brake on this black beauty here. So uh, grab a coffee and I'll, what, am I, what will I do? Will I send, send the scooter, do the intro, send the scooter, something like that. Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a clear to the meringue, all the sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice, my car to other forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone? Can I send and come at the house and took over? So we are the brothel of summer. Right, the first thing I need to do is uh, remove this. Pawncast and uh, my god, I think I'm gonna try and do it in uh, in one piece just to make things easy there Obviously I have to remove the headset top. I'll show you how I do that I'm gonna have to do some uh, Artificial zooming or something so you can see this I can't quite get my camera over there I don't want to be bothered with the wobbly cam, but on the on the uh, series 3 scooters You have two screws that hold the top of the horn cast one each side here at the top Hope you can see that. Yes, you can. That's my finger. Hello <laughs> <laughs> and you have these two screws here. Now, uh, just gonna check. Yep. So this one holds your mugod, and this one holds the uh, the horn cast. So I shall uh, remove these, and hopefully, I should be able to take out the uh, take off the mugod. Right, I removed the screws on the back side that hold the mug guard and uh, no, the uh, horn cast in place. And I've just started to remove the uh, screws for the mug guard. And I've just noticed something. I was hoping to take this off in one piece, but <laughs> there are actually no screws holding the uh, horn cast to the mug guard, which is uh, a quite a bit, <laughs> it's quite a disconcerting and I see why because they're snapped off in there can you see that so that's something I'm gonna have to fix <laughs> so instead of fixing it they've just uh, fit this uh, loose which is uh, interesting interesting to say the least I've just released the uh, headset on this and as you can see there's more holes in this than a uh, piece of Swiss cheese which is pretty handy it means that I don't have to cut some holes when I uh, feed the uh, hydraulic cable through. The only thing is I've also found a hole oddly enough here. Ta -da! Can you see that? So uh, I'm not sure how this arrangement will work but it would be quite handy if I could put it through there and just use the rubber grommets that were concealing those holes uh, before. That looks quite nice. Uh, problem being, maybe I've got a bit of pad access uh, on the uh, throttle tube. I don't know. I'll see. I'll see. Uh, see what I'm going to do there at a later date. But uh, what I want to do before I uh, take off this piece, the uh, the, the clutch lever is actually remove the uh, front wheel, the original one that's on it now. In order to uh, lift the front tire off here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little jack of mine under the uh, the stand here. First off, <laughs> should move everything that's I've, I've placed on the footboards. <laughs> and hopefully, uh, I could just lift her up. Oh, it's a bit tall. And stick the jack under. Oh my goodness, please don't. <laughs> this is nervous. It's not nerve wracking. It's not my scooter. Right, so that should do it. It's pretty secure. I'm going to have to be careful with that unless I put a strap around there or something. But, uh,. Uh, plan of attack now really is uh, take off these uh, shocks, is fit some uh, lovely looking BGM piggyback front shocks on that. Uh, I'm obviously going to have to remove the uh, front brake cable, that's not needed anymore. 
simple enough to do. And obviously I have to take off the uh, speedo cable. Come on you bugger. Oh, it <laughs> I, was, I was hoping that would just ease off, there you go. Something like that, thread it out. So that's that off. I can actually pull that through the fork, I reckon. I'm just gonna cut it. <laughs> I can't be bothered taking that off. Uh, <laughs> it's not my scooter. Um, and then uh, take obviously remove the uh, speedo cable, which is sitting really tight. So I'm gonna have to use some pliers or vice grips or something on that. I've got one handily here. So let's see if I can take that off. It means I can remove both the, uh, the front brake cable and the speedo cable and then it's just a case really of loosening these uh, two hub nuts i've been assured that the uh, the fork has been upgraded for some strange reason it's been upgraded with uh, uh, mb um, progressive springs uh, that's actually something i'm not really keen on the last pair of those I fit, they were a little bit short and they were actually binding on the spring and bottoming out on the spring before they uh, uh, touch the uh, top out buffer, which is a bit strange, I reckon. Normally I'd recommend if you're fitting anti-dive um, disc brake and uh, either use original ones or if you're a poker like me and you like to uh, ride quite hard, then I think the BGM 10% uh, plus or 10% stronger springs are a better option than the uh, MB ones there. So uh, let's get cracking on. That removed, that removed, and these removed. Let's do it. As a note of interest, uh, he's got MB links, which uh, are very, very, very good. I uh, have these on my uh, Series 1. And as you can see, these are the type that don't rust. Wait. Right, so I have removed the uh, link out of the fork with that wonderful, can you see it? That one there. Wonderful K2 Customs uh, fork spring compressor. Makes life a lot easier. Um, what I have to do now is, if you can see the uh, white part on this lug, I have to remove that so that the um, I, yeah, so that it's going to be an anti-dive uh, disc brake. You can't keep this on the Casa One if you uh, don't want it to be anti-dive, but uh, obviously we want this to be anti-dive. And I've been looking at the instructions uh, for the uh, Casa disc on the interwebs. If you fancy having a ganja at those, they're pretty good. I'll put a link down, down there somewhere. Um, they made a nice video on how to do it, and it all looks very, very simple, but it, this, this does take quite a while. Uh, only problem being here, I can see it, it's going to be quite difficult to cut off this lug. They want, they, they want me to remove the whole lug right into the bone here. Um, is that the MB lugs, or the MB links, they're quite angular here, so I'm going uh, to have to be really careful uh, when I'm removing this and I'll have to give it a bit of a polish and because of the fact that it's starting to uh, show some rust although if I give that a bit of a rub with some uh, emery cloth a uh, really fine emery cloth I can get away from that so get it get, get it off so it's just surface rust but I think I'm going to put some sort of anti-rust treatment uh, in the area there where I remove the lug it's gonna, not going to be able to see it when the uh, when the link is fitted, but that's uh, that's just how I operate. So I'll save you the uh, hassle of, uh, I won't show you uh, my uh, action with the angle grinder. I'll uh, just uh, get on with it and show you what it looks like when I'm done. I think it's gonna take quite a while actually. <laughs> ta -da! And by the magic of internet, actually, if you can see there, I actually managed to buff it out uh, 
the uh, the rust with an M3 Scotch pad looks pretty good. And this is what the backside looks like with the lug removed. I've tried to keep some material there. I might have to take it away, I'm not sure. I'll let, let me uh, test fit it in the fork first and uh, fit the hub. And we'll see if we've got any clearance issues. So just uh, I'm pretty sure we should be okay. But they're quite solid, quite thick, these uh, MB, MB lugs. And uh, once I'm sure that the... Uh, that this doesn't interfere with the hub. I'm going to uh, put some Aconol or some uh, rust treatment on there so it doesn't start rusting and you won't be able to see it anyway, so it'll be all right. Cool, let's uh, onwards and upwards. Hello. <laughs> I'm actually getting carried away with this. It's uh, such a lovely piece of uh, piece of machine in this thing. So what I've done is I, uh, I've just test fit the uh, disc. It's all loose in here. Nothing's been uh, tightened up. Just to see that I've got the clearance right. And I'm pondering my uh, brake route in. Problem is, uh, the little hole that I've got under the headset there, uh, <clears throat> the head of the banjo is too, just simply too, too big to go through there. That would have looked pretty neat, to tell you the truth. But, uh, yep, there's a couple of notches in the headset, so I'm going to have to do that. Uh, put it through the headset the old traditional way. Uh, this incidentally is the, it's got wires for uh, a brake light. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna figure out how to fit those. I think, I think they just simply fit. Plug them into the uh, horn wires there. That's both earth and, because that goes to the backlight. Uh, I think so at least, <laughs> we, we, we shall see. I might have to ask a grown up about that. But, uh, so what I have to do now, I've found out, I was actually hoping to fit the root this and uh, fit the the handlebar uh, Watson jig, but uh, I have to, it's quite tight here on the GP, so I have to uh, take off the mug guard and I have to uh, get the old Dremel out and uh, notch the uh, the bottom, uh, what's it called, dust cover for the, for the bearing on the fork there. So that's gonna sit correctly. Uh, yeah, so, um, what to do, what to do? Yep, yeah, I'll do that. I'll remove the, uh, front mud guard. Uh, basically, it's loose already. I've got to remove this upper screw for the, uh, footboard strip. And this lower one here, I think, is actually inside it's what's holding the uh, the aluminium footboard strip in place, so that's a bit of a bit of a pain in the ass. But it's like one of these. This job here is definitely not. You're definitely not going to be fitting this in like five minutes flat, and it's a good job to go through everything and uh, not make a pig's ear of it. As you can see here, is bought the upgraded Casa Performance uh, caliper, which uh, looks really really nice i mean you've got to say that that is a gorgeous piece of uh, engineering there definitely in order for this video not to be like uh, three million years long let's have a look at you where are you you're there hello <laughs> in order for this not to be like uh, three million years long i think i'm gonna knock it on the head and uh, i'll call this one a day and uh, if you want to uh, have a look how i uh, sort out the wiring and stuff like that then uh, don't forget, tune in uh, next week and uh, I'll post another video. Hopefully, uh, I'll be fitting the uh, hydraulics there and uh, we'll be uh, uh, bleeding the brakes, fitting the hub, of course, tightening everything down. And then it's onwards and upwards to uh, fitting the actual SST265 engine. I've also got some other bits and bobs. It's, it's brought loads of wires and cables. and <laughs> So it's not... It's not going to be one of those five minute jobs, but I have to say after having a while outside of the garage, I'm quite enjoying myself uh, just tinking around uh, in here. So don't forget, if you, uh, if you enjoy the channel, you can uh, support it by uh, buying merch like this, or you can uh, just simply buy me a coffee. And whatever you do, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, loves. Ta-ra!